Meeting for Tuesday, December 11th, 2018. Tonight's invocation will be led by Pastor Randy Dupree of the First Assembly of God. Please stand for an invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Is Randy here? Yes. I do not see Randy. He told me he would be here, but uh, we have a backup. <laughs> Mr. Mund, <laughs> congratulations. Thank you, Doug. <laughs> Number two quarterback. If we could bow our heads, please, and thank you for the opportunity to pray this evening. Heavenly Father, we thank you as we head into this Advent season, the time of Christmas, as we look to your birth and also to your second coming. Lord, in this we pray for wisdom, wisdom for our commissioners, our city leaders. We pray for their safety, for those who are out and about in the city, climbing lines, digging holes, construction. We thank you for their labors, and we will thank you for their wisdom, Father, and we pray for their safety. Bless our community. I pray for a spirit of revival and renewal within our town, Lord, and within our nation. Guide us, Father, to your glory. We pray these things. Amen and amen. 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 I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Tonight's consent agenda, city commission meeting minutes for Tuesday, November 28, 2018, 2018 appropriation ordinance number AO-18-23 in the amount of $2,981,792.01 and appropriation ordinance number AO-18-23A for Taylor Crane in the amount of $1,401.75. Are there any questions or amendments to the first to these items on the consent agenda? Second. Motion was made by Commissioner Van Oster and seconded by Mayor Bauer to approve the consent agenda as presented. Mayor Bauer. Aye. Commissioner Dunn. Aye. Commissioner Van Oster. Aye. Commissioner Williams. Aye. And commissioners, uh, Commissioner Taylor did call uh, right before the meeting and he was hung up uh, on a work project and unable to be here. Thank you. Tonight we have a special presentation by the City of Coffeville Area Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Candy Westbrook, Executive Director of the Chamber, will make a presentation. Thank you. Thank you. No. Is that got the special notes on it? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want. <laughs> well, thank you for letting me come tonight. And uh, just wanted to give you an end of the year, re re excuse me, report, let you know a little bit about what we do, we do at the chamber throughout the year. So make sure I know how to use this here. <clears throat> so I want to start off just talking about a couple of new things that we started with this this, this year, some projects that we are doing, um, one of which is our new website. Um, it just launched this week. Not quite everything on it that we wanted, um, but it's almost there. Um, current website we had was pretty much being controlled by a company out of the country, and we didn't have access to it, so we finally said, that's enough. So this new website we're hoping is really great for our community because it has everything from relocation packages to um, small business resource um, information, just a community calendar that we hope everybody will use, and then especially just resources for our businesses to use. So it's going to be really easy, um, user friendly, and uh, kind of hoping that everybody will take advantage of it. The other thing we have been working on and will be out in January is a community guide. Um, it's just a great resource on what Coffeeville offers that will be here in Coffeville, but then also can be used for visitors. So um, that was one thing. We also sent 30 different um, community members to the Kansas Leadership Center in Wichita. Um, it's a training center and you could go for either two and a half days up to seven days of intensive training to learn how to work on challenges in your business or your community. So that's 30 more people that are now back here in Coffeville working on things for our community. Um, so we were excited about that. 
But primarily our focus is on helping our local businesses and just making sure that, that uh, business connection is strong. We welcomed 21 new members this year. Um, they all have access to training and to referrals and resources and a little bit of everything just to kind of help them be successful. Some of those trainings that we offered this year was everything from Excel training, um, social media, stress management, we all need a little bit of that. Uh, just a whole bunch of different tips and tricks that we could give out to our businesses to help their business continue to grow. We also implemented some special services. A lot of small businesses don't have access to certain things, and so we wanted to start offering a few of those things for them. So we partnered with the CRMC to offer a wellness screening for our small businesses, um, professional headshots, that was a very popular one, and, um, and a couple other few things that we tried out this year. Just recently, we sent six local businesses to Destination Boot Camp. It is a two and a half day intensive training in Colorado that teaches a business how to make their business um, a destination to bring in visitors to get more, basically, um, tax revenue here in Coffeville. Um, all the businesses came back super excited, have great ideas. Some of them are already implementing them and um, are hopefully going to use that as a platform to just continue to grow their business. And then the last thing is just workforce support. We do partner with uh, Kansas Works and, and just do some job uh, uh, postings on our own and just supporting our businesses to try to help with their workforce needs. Uh, of course, we're a big proponent of shopping local. So we do a few different things throughout the year. Um, two of the big events we have is the Holiday Open House and the Christmas Bucks giveaway. Those two events bring in several thousand dollars in revenue um, just to our local businesses during the holiday season. Um, we just had a drawing, our first drawing at the parade, and nobody has came forth yet. So we will be doing another drawing tomorrow. Hopefully somebody will come forth and claim that money. So, um, but that all is in a special bucks program where they, sit, they can spend that only here locally in Coffeeville at um, participating stores. So, and then another one of our events um, is probably our most popular one. It's called Coffee News and Networking. And every week we go to a business different business in town and we highlight them. We do a Facebook Live uh, presentation and we just kind of talk about what that business has to offer our community. Um, then our members can give a brag or brief about what's going on in their business and um, we use that information and we market for them. We go paper, we go out to the radio, radio um, we email it out to everybody, just kind of get it anywhere and everywhere we can for our members. So. Again, just try and help our, our local businesses just be sustainable. Uh, along with helping our business, which is our primary focus because they are, of course, the ones that pay our bills, uh, we do try to serve as a community resource. So we just upgraded our relocation packages for individuals. Uh, like I said, we just started up a community calendar this year. We keep about a bajillion lists, it seems like. Um, Somebody needs daycare, we've got a list for that. They need a meeting room, we've got a list for that. So just different resources in town. And then of course we probably give out, um, I would say on average 20 different referrals a week to local businesses. Um, somebody needs a pest control, they need a new bank, whatever, they call the chamber and uh, we give out a referral. And then in between all our free time, we try to throw on a few uh, good events here in town too to help with quality of life. Our Christmas parade, of course, and thank you to all those that were there <laughs> that evening. Um, had a great turnout, even though we thought everybody was going to run away because of the weather, but turned out beautiful and uh, had a really good turnout for that. And then I mentioned last time I was here, the Spooktacular, always a big event, um, several hundred people downtown for that. We host a banquet every year for the 4-H students here in our county, um, so just kind of a, to honor their achievements. And of course, we are gearing up. We are part of the 150th task force that's planning some big events for next year. Very excited about that. A lot of good stuff going to be coming for that. Uh, then the last thing is we do serve as the office for the fair and rodeo. Um, so throughout the year, we handle all the record keeping, um, letters, phone calls, um, just basically the office, the physical office for the fair and rodeo. And then of course, during summertime, it's uh, crazy. Um, one of the big things that we wanted to work on this year, or I wanted to work on this year specifically, was just working on infrastructure. Um, I feel like if we are going to be here for the long haul and be a resource for our community and our members, we need to make sure that we take care of 
just our, our technology and our infrastructure so that we can continue to support businesses. Um, so one of the things that we worked on is replacing our phone system. It was from the 1970s and wasn't working very effective, effectively. So uh, to cover that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we launched a new website. Um, and then we continue to work on the meeting room upstairs that is free for our members so that they can use it. Um, we put in a new projector system, system and a conference call and some other amenities. So um, we will continue that in this coming year and working on just again, working on the infrastructure so we can continue to be here for a long time. One of the big things that uh, I'm a firm believer in is making sure that we are collaborating and partnering, um, but not duplicating. Uh, there's a lot of great organizations and businesses here in town that do some amazing things, and I don't think it's necessarily a good uh, time and fund allocation to do the same job. So I try to make sure that I am partnering with the ones that are experts and then I just focus on our businesses. Um, so of course we try to work with the city anytime you guys need anything. Uh, we always want to support and collaborate. We've sponsored a few events. Do work with Tricia and Mac um, on economic projects throughout the year, as well as the Highway 169 Coalition. Southeast Kansas Works, um, we help them with the big job fairs, the regional job fairs in the area, and other workforce needs. Uh, leadership Coffeeville, again, I, I'm a firmer, firm believer in just supporting leadership in Coffeeville. We've got to continue to grow the people that want to be involved in our community so we can sustain future. Um, CRMC here tonight. Um, we try to partner with them uh, just to continue to promote wellness in our community as much as we can. And then our staff serves on a ton of advisory boards in town. Um, that's just a few of them right, ne right there, Windsor Place, Midland, Leadership Coffeeville. Um, but we try to support the community as much as possible when, when we have a free moment. So, um, With all those activities we do, it seems like we might have a staff of 20, but we are a staff of three. So myself, uh, Lakeisha Johnson, and Samantha Cutterick, who is our tourism director. And just real briefly, I'll tell you a little bit about what happened with our tourism department. Um, and then Sam said if you guys ever wanted to come in, she'd be happy to come in and present as well. Sam joined the We Can Board to represent Southeast Kansas. That's a statewide organization to help with projects in rural communities. Um, so she joined that this year, and that was great. Represents us at several trade, show, trade shows, mostly in Kansas, but even a few in some other states, to try to bring visitors here to Coffeville. Um, Sam worked on two new projects this year just to try to add value for our visitors. This picture here is an example of the cemetery sign that she redesigned this year, and if you've never been out there, it's, it's beautiful. Um, so it looks totally different than it did before. And then she is in the beginning stages of doing murals in Death Alley. Um, so that'll be another great project that'll be coming here soon. And of course, working on just an online presence, which is very important with our visitors to try to get visitors here. Um, they, they go to the website, they go online to look for places to travel. Um, educated others on the rebrand of, of Visit Coffeeville and the mission. Um, constantly advertising in all kinds of magazines to try to bring tourists here, but this year tried a few n new ones out. Uh, for example, there's a Hunt Kansas magazine, and um, actually it was pretty effective. We actually were able to bring a few hunters into the region. So, And then we have a uh, redesign of our visitor's guide that's getting ready to come out, and that goes all across the state, especially into the travel tourism um, areas. So. Um, and then just to leave it on one last high note, we have a, um, our annual dinner, and you are all invited to that. That is on January 31st. Um, and we, during that dinner, one of the things that we do is we highlight and recognize some special individuals and businesses in Coffeville. Uh, we are seeking nominations for the awards. Um, so if you haven't seen that nomination form, let me know. I'll be happy to bring one to you. But definitely need nominations from the whole community so that we can recognize outstanding businesses and um, citizens here in Coffeville. And then we um, have a special speaker coming to our dinner in January, um, Ed O'Malley, who was a former governor candidate and um, the CEO of the Kansas Leadership Center. He will be speaking at our dinner. So, Any questions on anything? I just did a quick, quick highlight on a few things, so. I, I don't have any questions. Um, great presentation. I thought it was very crisp, nice, clean. Um, one thing I would like to shout outs to mm -hmm. the chamber. So you helped us with our city manager hire, taking 
individuals around to, yes. to, to tour that the city. Great. So I, we really appreciate that from the chamber. And then personally, thank you for being involved with, uh, with my place of employment, with uh, mm. getting some community service things done. I think oh, it was yeah. more Brown Mansion uh, <laughs> tours and things like that. But thank you for, for stepping up. I know, uh, obviously, staff of three that could take a staff of 20. So yeah. I appreciate thank I you. appreciate all that you thank guys you do. Much. I know it's a lot of work. So good job. Thank you, Candy. Thank you, Candy. We'll move into new business, discussion and action to make an appoint appointments to Planning Commission. We have one applicant, Carla Lillisher, if you would like to come up to the podium. Carla, I know you've been on the Planning and Commission already, so uh, just 30 seconds. What, 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 have you, what have you enjoyed and why, why are you pursuing doing it again? Well, with my experience in real estate, I really would like to see new construction. We need it terribly. And I think that um, zoning is going to be really important for that because location, location, location. Right. And I like to think that I bring um, common sense decisions uh, to the board and uh, have a good knowledge of kind of what makes sense and what doesn't. So I would like to uh, serve. All right. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Any questions for Carla? Move to approve, uh, or I'm sorry, move to appoint Carla Leisher to the uh, Planning Commission to serve until January 1st, 2022. Mm -hmm. I'll second. second. Go ahead. There's three seconds there. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Standing ovation. <laughs> I was looking at you so That's often. fine. <laughs> Motion was made by Commissioner Williams and seconded by Commissioner Doan to appoint Carla Lelisher to a three-year term on the Planning Commission serving to January 1, 2022. Commissioner Van Oster. Aye. Commissioner Williams. Aye. Mayor Bauer. Aye. Commissioner Doan. Aye. Thank you, Carla. Thank you. Yes. I appreciate it. Next item, discussion and action to make appointments to the CRMC Board of Trustees. We have three applicants, Dr. Vignet Coley, Doug Mund, and Dr. Garrick Retley. Um, I guess we'll start with the first one. Dr. Coley, would you please uh, approach the podium and just uh, give us a brief overview and, and why you want to be on the commission or on the CRMC board and, and what value you're going to bring to that board. Okay. Uh, I, I uh, finished my you know, the business administration in the healthcare management and because of my experience in the healthcare management, I can serve CRMC to the best of my ability. I've got a strong medical and administrative background, so that is going to help CRMC. Okay. Any questions for Dr. Coley? What, um, in, in your perspective, what does the Board of Trustees do? Uh, board of Trustees basically, you know, the, they decide whatever the CEO bring you know the uh, whatever the matters they have to be discussed in the board meeting and they have to decide in the interest of the community in the interest of the hospital okay. so that you know the best should go to the patients and the community all right thank you thank, thank you. you thank you very much thank, thank you, you. Mm -hmm. mr mund Thank you, commissioners. Thank you. Same question. <laughs> <laughs> I can repeat it if you would like. No, that's, that's <laughs> fine, sir. Um, I would say with my previous medical experience as a clinical and registered dietitian, administrative dietitian, and now as a pastor, I kind of have a unique approach to this. Um, became interested in this. I was serving as a volunteer chaplain and working with some of the hospital staff when I was asked to consider this. and met with Lori to ask what is involved and one of the things she said was is you are going to function as a liaison between the hospital and the community <coughs> I'd like to help out in that manner questions so you brought up a good point that uh, it is a liaison between the hospital and the community mm -hmm. so can you briefly tell us how you're involved in the community 
Well, first of all, I'm a pastor at Grace Fellowship Church. Um, as a pastor, I've served as the CMA, which is the Coffeeville Minnesota Alliance uh, Pastors Committee as the president, and now as the vice president. We just did disband. Um, I organize the prayer list for you guys, the visitor list for the chambers and the city's page. I do volunteer as a, as a um, volunteer chaplain. I work as a mentor at the school. I was on the USD 445 facilities committee. And that's just top, top of my head here for you. All right. Good. All right. Any other questions? Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you for consideration and having three applicants applicants for two positions. I'm glad you get to make a choice. <laughs> thank you. Whichever direction you go. <laughs> it's better than being one short. <laughs> right, right. Dr. Retley. Yes. The question, why am I interested in the yeah. position? Mm -hmm. Going back? Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, I have a very deep bond to Coffeeville Regional. I came here straight out of residency, meaning that this hospital is the first and only affiliation I have had in my postgraduate career. Uh, it's literally my home away from home. Some weeks I spend more hours at the hospital than I do in my own living room. And uh, for, since I moved my office to the hospital some years ago, I'm there every day. I walk the halls, I see patients, visitors, families, staff, and employees. I talk to them. I hear about the small problems in addition to the large problems that are discussed in the board meetings, and I think that makes me a better trustee. I've got experience. Since being here, I've been um, four times chief of medical staff, set four terms on the board of directors, the last term on the board of trustees. Um, I've spent 20 years on our quality improvement committee. And with this experience, I think that brings a lot to the table, and I think I would make an excellent trustee, and I would appreciate continuing to serve. Very good. Questions? A couple questions. Yes, um, is this your first or second term as a trustee? This will be second as a trustee. So you've served one term so far? Correct. Okay. Uh, any other questions? No. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Um, at this point, I, I'd like to make a motion to appoint Pastor Doug Munn and Dr. Garrett Retley to four-year terms to the CRMC Board of Trustees serving until January 1st, 2023. I'd like, I'd like to say one thing before we do that. Okay. It's always been my policy to, to uh, appoint people uh, when they apply who haven't applied before or who have not served on a board and the reason that i do that and it has been the the uh, policy of the commission in the past is because it discourages people from applying when we appoint the same people over and over so i'm going to make a motion that since um, we'll take up your motion first okay and then we'll go from there just, I, I just want to be clear. So it's Dr. Coley and Doug Mund as the individual, and then Dr. Retley as the doctor on call would be the physician. Because well, I think there's two positions. There's a, there's a non-hospital mm -hmm. position and one hospital position. A and physician, Dr. Retley yes. is, only a doc, is the only doctor Dr. affiliated with CRMC, right. just so we're clear. Okay, well, see, there was some confusion well, about that last time. Yeah, I think. And, and the, you need to be so very specific on that because I, I think that the bylaw state that it doesn't make any difference whether or not they're associated with CRMC. Correct, yeah. Right. The bylaws say no more than one physician shall be appointed, period. Right. Okay. And that's what we got hung up on yeah. last time. So for a for for non physician position, there's one applicant. Okay. Right. I mean, I'm asking. Yeah, I, mayor, I'm, I'm asking. I, I I guess I I thought it was they had to be affiliated with CRMC as a doctor no. at CRMC. Yeah. No. It, it, I mean, the the bylaws do not make that distinction. Clear. Okay. Uh, okay. So 
Fair enough. You yeah. can only appoint one physician unless you decide to change the bylaws, which or the ordinance, which is which is an option for you, but that right. would be a separate issue. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Well, okay. my appointment doesn't change, so that's that's who I. Those, that's my choice. So what was your motion? So there is a motion, a motion to appoint on the floor. Pastor Mund yes. and Dr. Retley to four-year terms to the CRMC board serving until January 1st, 2023. I'll second. Motion was made by Mayor Bauer and seconded by Commissioner Doan to appoint Doug Mund and Garrick Rutley to four-year terms on the CRMC Board of Trustees serving to January 1, 2023. Commissioner Doan. Aye. Commissioner Van Oster. Aye. Mayor Bauer. Aye. Commissioner Williams. No. We done? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you all for your applicate. We appreciate your time and uh, volunteering for these positions. Item number three, a discussion action to approve a 2019 cereal malt beverage license. City Clerk Cindy Price will make comments. Mayor and Commissioners, uh, we had 17 applications uh, for cereal malt beverage license renewals for uh, 2019. Fire Department has inspected uh, all of the businesses. As we began our normal background checks, found out that the police department is no, label, no longer able to do the background checks. The state of Kansas uh, won't allow that uh, anymore. So uh, we did a little research uh, and we've contacted the KBI to see if they'll do our background checks. They will, uh, since in our ordinance, it says that that is specifically required in order to approve a certain malt beverage license. So I have sent the list to the KBI. They'll do the checks and then they will get those uh, back to me. At the present time, I have not received those back. However, uh, I would like uh, for you, they're, they're eligible on everything else except pending the background checks. So I would uh, recommend that you go ahead and approve the <coughs> uh, 2019 Cereal Mont Beverage license applications pending the results of the KBI checks. Okay. Oh. I, I don't have any, I don't really have any questions. We just, we have a timeline. I, I assume that they have to be approved before January 1st, 2019 yes. in order for, and yes. we, have we got that commitment from the KBI right. to get, have that completed. And that's why I didn't want to wait till the next meeting <laughs> right. on the 20th, because yep. that would really run it, uh, run it Close. short. Yep. Okay. Now, okay. if the KBI does not get the, get that back to us, obviously, uh, we won't uh, send out the license. Yep. Sure. Okay. okay. Sorry. Yeah, um, go ahead. Make Sorry. a motion to approve the 2019 cereal malt beverage licenses pending the results of the KBI background checks on the applicants. I'll second. Motion was made by Commissioner Van Oster and seconded by Mayor Bauer to approve 2019 cereal malt beverage license pending results of the KBI background checks on applicants. Commissioner Van Oster. Aye. Commissioner Williams. No. Mayor Bauer. Aye. Commissioner Dunn. Aye. Resolution number R-18-83, a resolution to approve the 2019 Montgomery County Fair Association Cereal Malt Beverage License. City Clerk Cindy Price will make comments. Mayor and Commissioners, uh, we act on the Montgomery County uh, Fair Association, which is the Interstate Fair and Rodeo. Uh, we take that one up separately uh, because we do need a resolution that would exempt them from the city ordinance which prohibits the sale of alcoholic beverages uh, in, the, in public places. This resolution is the same as has been in previous years. It only allows uh, the sale and consumption of cereal malt beverage in the arena. There is a, a drawing in your, uh, in your commission packet. Uh, they meet the requirements. Of course, they haven't been inspected. They'll be inspected uh, once the fair is set up. This, too, would be pending the successful uh, result of the KBI background check. Any other questions regarding this resolution? I'll make a motion to approve resolution number R-18-83 for adoption pending results of the KBI background check on application. I'll second. Motion was made by Mayor Bauer and seconded by Commissioner 
<clears throat> Van Oster to approve resolution number R-18-83 for adoption, pending results of the KBI background check on the applicant. Commissioner Williams. No. Mayor Bauer. Aye. Commissioner Doan. Aye. Commissioner Van Oster. Aye. Resolution number R-18-84, a resolution to recognize preferred vendors for 2019 for chemicals for the water treatment plant. Public Works Director Chuck Shively will make comments. Mayor and Commissioners, on December 4th, we held our annual bid opening for chemicals to be used at the water treatment plant for the next year. Along with my staff report, you should have a tabulation of the bids received listing both the unit prices bid and the annual cost based on the estimated annual quantity to be used for each chemical. Um, our recommended preferred vendor for each chemical is shaded in yellow. I also included a 10-year table listing the actual chemical costs per year, the actual gallons of water treated per year, and the calculated chemical costs per thousand gallons for the water treated each year. Um, for the chemicals bid, we recommend the low bidder be designated as preferred vendor for each chemical in 2019. This year, the chemical bid prices for some chemicals went up, some went down. Overall, the proposed chemical costs for 2019, as listed in the excuse me, in the resolution result in an estimated increase of less than 1% or actually $2,767 for the entire year out of a total estimated chemical cost of over 335000 The designation as preferred vendor documents our intent to purchase the chemicals to be used at the water treatment plant during 2019 from the specified vendors, but if at any time a designated preferred vendor fails to meet our requirements, we would then move to the next lowest bidder until we find one that meets our expectations. So I recommend approval of the resolution designated the preferred vendors for 2019 as listed in the body of the resolution. I'd be happy to answer any questions. It's like you guys did a good job going out, getting seven quotes from several no bids, yes. but you yeah. know, what do you expect, right? Yeah. And you took low bid on every single one of them. So, yep. and that, that's, that's our expectations. I, I see no problems with the, the path you went down and, and what you've come brought to, forward to the commission. So I'll make a motion to approve resolution number R-18-84 for approval. I'll second. Motion was made by Mayor Bauer and seconded by Commissioner Van Oster to approve resolution number R-18-84 for adoption. Mayor Bauer. Aye. Commissioner Williams. Aye. Commissioner Doan. Aye. Commissioner Van Oster. Aye. Resolution number R-18-85, a resolution to execute a construction contract with VRB contractors for the filter number two renovation project at the water treatment plant. Public Work Director Chuck Shively will make comments. Mayor and Commissioners, the Coffeyville Municipal Water Treatment Plant has six filter beds. More than 20 years ago, the subfloor of filter number two blew out, leaving the, that filter inoperable. The remaining five filters were adequate to treat more than enough drinking water to meet the demand at that time, so filter number two was mothballed for future repairs if needed. Since that time, customer demand has increased partially due to a water purchase agreement with Coffeyville Resources for a large quantity of water every day. The five filters are adequate to meet our current demand, but there are possibilities of additional sales to Coffeyville Resources and others in the future. If Tyson decides to come to Coffeyville, the additional filter capacity would be necessary to meet their needs. So the City Commission authorized an agreement with Alger Martin and Associates to design and bid the filter renovation. On, on November 15th, the City opened bids for the project. Three bids were received. The low bidder was BRB Contractors Incorporated from Topeka, Kansas. We've worked with BRB in the fact 
in the past. In fact, uh, BRB did the previous project in which we renovated the other five filter beds 15 years ago. Um, they were good to work with and staff believes they're well qualified to complete the project successfully. The project as bid consisted of a base bid for the filter renovation plus two alternates. Alternate one was for surface preparation and painting of the interior of filter two. And alternate two was for surface preparation and painting of all existing filter gallery piping, fittings, and valves in the basement of the water treatment plant. City staff and our engineer believe that BRB's price for the two alternates is high, so our recommendation tonight is to award the base bid only, then we'll negotiate with BRB for a lower price for the alternates. If we get an acceptable price for one or both alternates, we'll then uh, have them complete that work and bring it back to the commission as a change order. If we can't negotiate a price with BRB that we believe is reasonable, we'll just bid the necessary work separately after BRB completes their project. Um, so I recommend approval of the resolution authorizing the mayor to execute the proposed construction contract with BRB Contractors Incorporated for renovation of filter number two in the total amount of $392,330. I'd be happy to answer any questions on that one. Questions from the commission? It is, it's, it's a significant investment. Can it you is. reiterate why we would benefit from spending that money? I know, I know you talked about it in there before, but I just wanna, yeah. I wanna make it clear why, why we, do or do not think it's beneficial to do this? We're currently meeting the demands, mm -hmm. but we, a point could come where we won't, and uh, CVR has talked to us about the possibility of another water purchase agreement, which we sell it to them at a wholesale price, but we make profit on every gallon we sell them still. So it's a good deal for us if we can do that. Mm -hmm. um, if Tyson comes, we'll be prepared for them. Yeah. Um, it's just more security. If something happened to one of the other beds, mm -hmm. we could be at a point where we might be borderline being able to serve our water demands. Yeah. Does this have anything to do with expanding our current service area? Mm -hmm. If you mean our service area, no. Um, Tyson would be a new customer. There's other potential new customers, as you know, um, or customers, other customers that w might want a larger amount of water. Such but this doesn't approve that. I understand that. Yeah. But, uh, well, if, the if city of South Coffeyville if, if has If we're going asked. down that route, let's just yeah. get it out. Yeah, yep. the city of South Coffeyville has asked for the feasibility of purchasing additional water from the city of Coffeyville. They already have a water purchase agreement with us. Um, but that is something that would come to the city commission for approval if it even made it to that point. Because it would be a significant expense which should be on them because it doesn't really matter to us. I mean, yeah, we make profit off the water we sell to them is the commission is aware that that has been put on hold. Uh, we do have a meter project. Uh, then we have to do, after that installation, of course, SCADA and other <coughs> things, and then we would have to evaluate our system. So we're looking probably a year or a year and a half, if not longer, um, before anything would ever be considered. And that's just like Chris, uh, that's a lot of money. our timeline. <clears throat> I'm not opposed to it. Just we, that's a lot of money. We have informed uh, South Coffeeville that this is our intention as far as to evaluate our system and our future needs, and that it will take It'll a take year, a year and a half before uh, we do would uh, even look at anything like that. So. And we did, I mean, we were already in design for this upgrade 
before city of South Coffeyville approached us asking for more water. Is this a budgeted item? It is. It's in the water capital improvement fund. Other questions from the commission? No. Oh, I missed it. Kind of on the fence on this one. I don't. I don't have a problem with the project. I think it's a good idea. We need to expand our capabilities. I think it's good for the city. But I want to make sure that we're expending that we're spending this money to benefit our citizens and not uh, spending it to to uh, base. I don't want to go into the particulars, but I just want to make sure that hmm. we that we're spending this money to benefit our citizens and our community. Uh, we have notified the the party that our intention is to evaluate our system and not even address that. Okay, and I'm in favor of the project. Um, what, what would be the timeline? I'm, I'm so if we're a year and a half away from anything with any any other entity, well, how long will it take for? this to come back online is it uh, this three month, project a six month a year long project you know i i didn't look at the agreement <clears throat> but i believe it's six to nine months probably just okay. that's just off well i'm just trying to put time you know if, yeah. if that's something we're going to revisit in a year and a half and it takes a year to do the project well it's probably yeah. something we need to start looking at right now right yeah. obviously okay i remember when going on a tour through there uh -huh. and seeing you know the we one have, bed set yeah, there. Empty. Yeah, we have this capability. We just need a little renovation. Yeah. So, yeah. And all the all the controls that go with it. Right. Because yeah. that one blew out, and since then we did an upgrade project. The old filters were all controlled by pneumatic pneumatic valves, mm -hmm. so the air compressors would kick on mm -hmm. and the valves would slow. Now it's all electronic. The controls are electronic except that one filter. Okay. I move to approve the resolution as presented. Resolution number R-18-85. I'm sorry. Sorry. Got ahead of myself. Apologize. <laughs> I'll second. Motion was made by Commissioner Williams and seconded by Commissioner Doan to approve resolution number R-18-85 for adoption. Commissioner Williams. Aye. Mayor Bauer. Aye. Commissioner Van Oster. Abstain. <coughs> Commissioner Dunn. Aye. Thank you. Resolution number R-18-86, a resolution to execute a work authorization to Alger Martin and Associates for construction engineering and inspection services for filter number two renovation project at the water treatment plant. Public, work, public works director uh, Chuck Shively will make comments. This Housefield. proposed resolution is for the construction engineering and inspection services for that filter renovation project and I recommend approval of the proposed resolution authorizing the mayor to execute the proposed work authorization to Alger Martin and Associates for construction engineering and inspection services for the filter number two renovation project at the water treatment plant in an amount not to exceed $40,000. Same questions, same answers. Same answers. <laughs> See, it really wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. Not you actually approve. moved to approve this one. <laughs> it, wouldn't, it wouldn't work out in our benefit to not approve 86 when we just approved 85, right? So. Move to approve resolution number R-18-86. Second. Motion was made by Commissioner Williams and seconded by Mayor Bauer to approve resolution number R-18-86 for adoption. Commissioner Dunn. Aye. Mayor Bauer. Aye. Commissioner Van Oster. Abstain. Commissioner Williams. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Thank, Thank you. you, Chuck. <clears throat> Moving on to number item number eight, resolution number R-18-87, a resolution to execute a quick claim deed conveying 1405 South Maple to Wesley and Stardalina Moody. City Clerk Cindy Price will make comments. Mayor and Commissioners, the city owns a vacant lot at 1405 South Maple. <clears throat> Earlier this year, the Moody's contacted us. Uh, they uh, had interest in acquiring that property. They live at 1409 South Maple. 
uh, on the lot next to it, uh, so this would be uh, adjacent to it. Um, we did an agreement with them at that time that if they would mow and maintain the lot through the end of November, that we would uh, just give it to, uh, to them with a quick claim deed. Um, that works out well for the city. It puts the property back on the tax roll. We have no need for the property. I contacted the other departments to see uh, if there was any need. Uh, and it will also then alleviate the city from having to mow and maintain uh, the lot. So it's our recommendation uh, that we convey this property to the Moody's. Questions? I have none. Uh, do, no we a do we advertise that? No. Well, we have a whole lot of mowing to do. <laughs> <laughs> Could we kind of? We have a whole lot of mowing. That is correct. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I move to approve resolution number R-18-87. I'll second. Motion was made by Commissioner Williams and seconded by Commissioner Van Oster to approve resolution number R-18-87 for adoption. Commissioner Van Oster. Aye. Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Doan. Aye. Mayor Bauer. Aye. Commissioner Williams. Aye. Resolution number R-18-88, a resolution to execute a memorandum of agreement with Independence Police Department, Labette County 911, and Sumner County 911 for backup public safety answering services. PD Communications Director Trad Souls will make comments. Evening, Mayor and Commissioners. <coughs> uh, staff is requesting approval for a MOA with multiple agencies for our next-gen 911 system. In 2018, the state of Kansas 911 Coordinating Council required all Kansas PSAP points to have memorandums or MOAs on file with outside agencies for the next gen 911 system uh, for the purpose of backup in an unlikely event that our local backup would become non operational. Mm -hmm. The Kansas 911 Coordinating Council required the next gen 911 backup PSAP to be an outside 911 call center, preferably one. MOA in a 911 PSAP located in an adjacent county, another located two counties away, and then one located on the northern hub of Kansas. The Kansas is basically split up into a northern and southern half is what it is. So if one hub goes down, the, the northern half or the southern half will go ahead and take over. Uh, additionally, Montgomery County, Montgomery County is unique in the fact that we have two uh, next-gen 911 PSAPs, one's located in our county. And most in counties, Kansas have only one next gen 911 PSAP in each county. For the purpose of the MOA, the Kansas Coordinating Council considers the Independence 911 PSAP and outside 911 PSAP. Coffeeville believes the citizens we provide next gen 911 services to would be in best served if a memorandum of agreement are approved with the outside agencies, <coughs> call centers identified by staff. The rational for multiple MOAs are the event that the next gen 911 PSAP is inundated with emergency calls, awaiting 911 calls are automatically answered by a backup 911 center, fast and efficient reroute of emergency 911 calls if a communications center has an outage, evacuation of facility, or loss of facility. It eliminates the need to notify the AT&T Resolution Center to have our 911 calls rerouted to another PSAP which right now takes up to 30 to 40 minutes by the time that we call. And it establishes an emergency network of 911 professional overlay to each other during a major event. So staff is recommending the approval of the MOAs with the uh, Independence Police Department, Labette County 911 Communications Center, and Sumner County 911 Center. Questions? I have a question, Chad. We've sure. known each other for a long time, haven't yes, we? We have. Throw the, throw the book out and tell us what we're doing. What, what are we doing? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pretty much since the state of Kansas has now their own call handling system, meaning the state of Kansas took over 911, we do not have $200,000 $200, of equipment in the background now. The state of Kansas took it over. So what the state has now done is said, hey, instead of you having to call the, the resolution center and wait that 30 to 40 minutes to say, hey, I've got a bomb threat at our station, I've got to get out of here, and you're sitting there while everybody else is evacuated, this actually automatically takes that out. We log off from all of our computer systems, we walk out of the facility, 
call comes in for 911, it goes to this MOA to whatever agency it goes to first. Thank you. No problem. Very good. I don't have any further questions. Nope. Thank you. I have one just real quick, quick and sure. I might have missed it. Okay. Um, you're extremely intelligent and I'm glad you kind of dumbed it down for us. <laughs> but um, when we were on our tour the other day mm -hmm. at the station, you talked about if, if we're in the lower half and we call on our cell phone, that it may go somewhere else. For right now, well, Montgomery, that, Montgomery County, for any cell phone 911 calls that come in to us, right now it goes to the City of Independence Police Department. We are in the process, and which will probably take several months, but spatial routing, geospatial routing that the state is trying to get done is making it where all cell phone towers will go to the local PSAP. They are trying to get that completed, so we're in the process of working on that right now. Okay, so that's a completely so, separate. So deal. that's that's kind of a separate thing. Okay, yes. and Thank I don't you. think that we dumbed it down. I think that we just made it to where a normal human being could understand <laughs> it. instead of all the all the P saps and the MOAs and the FR and the GRDAs and all that stuff. Yeah, good point. <laughs> Thank you, Chad. Problem. Any other questions? I move to approve resolution number R dash one eight dash eight eight for adoption. I'll second. Motion was made by Mayor Bauer and seconded by Commissioner Van Oster to approve resolution number R-18-88 for adoption. Commissioner Williams. Aye. Mayor Bauer. Aye. Commissioner Doan. Aye. Commissioner Van Oster. Aye. Resolution number R-18-89, a resolution to purchase, purchase packing for unit number seven steam turbine generator for the electric utility. Electric Generation Superintendent Tony Lawson will make comments. Mayor, Commissioners. Purposes execute a purchase order to steam turbine alternative resources for the manufacturing of steam gland and diaphragm packing. Nine rows of packing have been identified for replacement. Star Turbine will manufacture nine rows of packing per OEM specifications. Staff, rec staff recommends the mayor be authorized to direct the director of finance to issue a purchase order to steam turbine alternative resources for the amount of $29,485 for the manufacturing of this packing. Some good packing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want it to be. Yeah, I, yeah. I assume you do. I can only make that assumption. Yeah. Any questions regarding this item? Move to approve resolution number R-18-89 for adoption. Second. Motion was made by Commissioner Van Oster and seconded by Mayor Bauer. Yes, correct. <laughs> to approve I resolution up, number right. R-18-89 for adoption. Commissioner Van Oster. Aye. Mayor Bauer. Aye. Commissioner Williams. Aye. Commissioner Dunn. Aye. One more. <laughs> resolution number R-18-90, resolution to approve re-wedging the generator on unit number seven, steam turbine generator for the electric utility. Electric sup general, generation superintendent Tony Lawson will make comments. The purpose is this to execute a, an extra work authorization purchase order to ST Cotter to have Illinois Electric Works re-wedge the unit seven's generator. Ele Illinois Electric Works serving as the electrical testing subcontractor for ST Cotter uh, having performed all electrical testing on the generator number seven has determined that 75 percent of these wedges supporting the generator stator was to be loose and in need of replacement. Staff recommends the mayor authorize the issuance of an extra work order authoriz authorization purchase order to ST Cotter in the amount of $68,257 to have Illinois Electric Works re-wedge unit seven's generator Additional repairs and extra work orders will be brought to the commission for approval. Questions or comment from the commission? Another item that has to be done, right? <laughs> yes. I move to approve resolution number R-18-90 for adoption. I'll second. Motion was made by Mayor Bauer and seconded by Commissioner Doan to approve resolution number R-18-90 for adoption. Mayor Bauer. Aye. Commissioner Williams. Aye. Commissioner Doan. Aye. 
Commissioner Van Oster. Aye. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. City Manager's Report. Mayor, Commissioners, uh, what can I say? It was my first experience at the parade. And I'll leave that for your comments, but no other word but wow. Um, it's a great thing for the city. And as I discussed this morning on the radio, please don't ever take that for granted, uh, the community. It's something special. Um, uh, a lot of work goes into it, and I know you'll talk about that. Uh, other than that, I uh, would like to thank staff. Um, they've been gracious and, and uh, have helped me. I'm learning from them. Um, we will we'll try new things together, uh, but uh, they're a great <coughs> group of people, and they truly believe in Coffeeville and, and want things uh, for Coffeeville to have in the future that will make Coffeeville great. So uh, a personal thank you to staff and uh, the great things that you do. And uh, thank you, uh, Commission, for allowing me to serve with them. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Comments from the public. The public is free to comment on items not listed on the agenda. Please address comments to the Commission as a body and be mindful of others who may also wish to speak by limiting your comments to three minutes. once <laughs> all right we'll move on to comments from the commissioners and staff who wants to start anyone I just like to say that I reiterate what the city manager said we had a an excellent Christmas parade thanks for the chamber for being a part of that and I know you guys do a lot of hard work to put that in there I was uh, <clears throat> picked up a straggler along the way <laughs> what are you looking at <laughs> I was invited oh okay <laughs> and uh, we, we had a good time I know my kids had a good time and, and I think the whole community had a good time we had a, an excellent showing of citizens and a lot of participants and for it being as cold as it was I think that we had a a very good turnout so thanks to the chamber and everybody who volunteered to to go out there and put in their time it's a good thing for our community I second that it was a mm -hmm. great event as people went out weathered the, mm -hmm. the cold and mm -hmm. made it a another successful Christmas parade in Coffeyville thank you chamber there was a lot of candy I was <laughs> I was able to circle back around and get back to the, you know, where <laughs> pretty quickly. So, yeah, my kids were very happy with the amount of candy they got. <laughs> so, <laughs> anything else? I, uh, I just want to give a, a shout out to the city. We uh, brought our leadership coffee bill class this last week to city governor governance day, and uh, they were very impressed um, and appreciative of, of Mark and Stephanie, and they, they really benefited from Stephanie's um, presentation um, that she did and uh, a few of them said that they they thought that might have been the the best day that they've been to so far so you guys did great we appreciate it had a nice tour um, went to the emergency services building um, captain uh, man this is on TV and I just forgot his name Danny did a he did a wonderful job um, going over our town's uh, crime statistics and um, that's always really good to see you know how our town is improving um, how our statistics are going down um, there's a lot of misnomers out on Facebook as there is with everything but it's uh, it's looking up for us um, everything's looking good the fire department made chili like I said but a nice tour of the facility there um, it was it all went really well and I appreciate it thank you I did want to add one less last piece of information so our next Commission meeting was supposed to be on Christmas e Christmas night correct the Tuesday so we've moved it to next Thursday 630 right here so okay. we will take care of all of our business yes. so that everyone can spend time with their family we won't be yes. here on Christmas night right <laughs> okay. any other questions or comments from this from the staff or commission um, I just have one you all were talking about the Christmas parade and I do want to encourage um, 
our community to get out to things, especially this time of year that are going on that a lot of people have worked on. One that comes to mind is our Brown Mansion. It is beautiful right now. And there are so many people that partnered with the Historical Society to make this happen. And all those funds that they raise go to preserve that beautiful piece of history uh, of Coffeeville that we can leave uh, for our future. So those types of things, please take advantage of. Um, and uh, they've done a marvelous job. It gets better every year. And so they uh, shout out to them and everybody that helps in that. Good. Thank you. Yes, thank you. This time I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Who seconded? Williams. Okay. Motion was made by Mayor Bauer, seconded by Commissioner Williams to adjourn all in favor. Aye. Aye. Aye.